would like to introduce Christine Stewart from Allocadia. <laughs> Philip Postrovsky from Rent Mula. <laughs> and Ryan Spong from Foodie. So thank you guys all for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you about, as I said, was um, the good, the bad, the ugly, and lessons learned. Um, and I don't know as well, um, but uh, what I'd like to do first, obviously, is let you guys introduce yourselves. So Christine, we'll start with you. Great. Um, I'm Christine Stewart. I'm the CEO and founder of Alcadia. So we're enterprise software for the chief marketing officer. We've got over 150 enterprise clients like GE Healthcare, Microsoft, Philips Lighting, uh, 100 people here in town in Vancouver. Uh, we've raised 30 million. I started the company with my identical twin sister, which is um, super common in tech. <laughs> and uh, yeah, glad to be here. And, hopefully inspire some people to go raise some money and do some fun stuff. Uh, Philip Ostrowski, co-founder of Remula. Uh, our mission is to create the rent we partner with medium to enterprise level property management companies. Uh, we're in over 400 cities across North America. Uh, we were founded uh, by, by my fraternal twin, and I ah, founded uh, Remula. Uh, Seems common. Over, yeah, <laughs> uh, over five years ago, and we've raised uh, just over 15 million to date. Great. Hi. Uh, hi, I'm Ryan Spong. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Foodie. Uh, we turn restaurants into corporate caterers. We're a software and services platform uh, founded here in Vancouver in 2013. We've raised 18 million bucks, and I think that's one of the questions we're going to answer, so I'll save that. Um, I ate my twin in the womb. Uh, <laughs> 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 the first iteration of Foodie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I'm also co-founder and uh, owner of uh, Taco Fino uh, here in BC, um, which sort of part of the founding story of, of, uh, of Foodie. And if you look under your chairs, you've all got to No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you guys for, for joining us. So um, as I alluded to uh, just before the introductions, I mean, I don't know Christine and Ryan. Ryan and I have met briefly a long time ago through uh, our mutual friend Keith Hipple, but um, I am going to start actually with Philip, not to, uh, to you know pick on anybody, but... Um, knowing Philip uh, over the last couple of years, I know that you've done some interesting different ways of raising. So could you, uh, I know you, you already said how much you've raised, but could you tell us maybe about how much you raised in your last round? Uh, how long did it take and, and can you give us any, you know, shed any light on any kind of interesting ways that you did it? Did you follow the norm? Yeah, so in our last round, I guess if you can call it that, we raised five million. Uh, we've never taken VC uh, capital. Uh, we've raised through kind of a continuous raise model uh, through um, an offering memorandum and through accredited investors. Uh, so we are, uh, when we announced that raise, we actually haven't raised that, like we actually now have raised that, uh, that amount, but uh, we raise over a longer period of time, which allows us to raise our valuation as we hit key milestones. Uh, so there's pros and cons to raising money that way. Well, one of the pros, I guess, is you can limit your dilution because you're able to take money in more as you need it. Um, I guess the downside is, you know, it can be a distraction, but again, it can limit um, dilution because you're raising as you go, so you're able to increase your valuation along the way. Cool. Uh, so, Ryan, um, picking up on that, uh, what was your last round and... and did you do anything interesting, or did you follow the norm, or what did you find? Yeah, I mean, ours is kind of a, a, a typical kind of startup model, I think. Uh, you know, the first uh, few rounds were done as convertible notes. Uh, I think we'd raised um, almost two, two and a half million bucks that way. Uh, and then in uh, December 2016, we closed our Series A. So it was a straight uh, uh, private placement with VCs, VC-led. Uh, we raised 10 million bucks in kind of two tranches that were sort of spaced apart. And that converted all the, you know, convertible notes into into prep shares. So, for uh, those of us in the audience that don't know, um, can you maybe just give us a really quick brief on a, what a convertible note is? Uh, yeah, I mean, in the early days uh, of your startup, 
you may have a thought on what it's worth, <coughs> um, but that may be up for discussion with your investors. Uh, and when it's just an idea or a few customers or a demo, um, you're basically saying to your investors or your investors are saying to you, let's just delay this conversation about what this is actually worth until a later date. Uh, so it's essentially a quasi-equity instrument. It's, um, it is technically debt, typically has a coupon attached to it, and then it, it will convert uh, into shares at a discount to the valuation at a later date. So um, it's capped at some, some rate that it discounts to. Uh, hopefully that's... Yeah, those are, I think, the rough, the rough points there. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, Christine, what, uh, what did your last round look like? How long did it take and yes. any interesting things you can impart from it? Yeah, so um, our last round was a Series B for $22 million, And uh, I think we've done it the real classic textbook. We did a million-dollar seed and a $7 million Series A 18 to 24 months later. And then another 18 to 24 months later, did the uh, Series B, went down to the Valley, have got some uh, Canadian Angels uh, and VCs, but went down to the Valley for the Series A and Series B and kind of did the fun tour. Um, yeah, so a pretty um, kind of, let's call it a, a standard way to, to raise money. Cool, thank you for that. Yeah. So um, if you might, just really quickly, similar to what Ryan did, um, for those of us in the audience that maybe don't know, um, you know, I think a lot of us are very familiar with early stage funding and uh, be it angel investing, yep. uh, seems somewhat obvious. Mm -hmm. um, but then, uh, can you just give us a quick, what does it mean on it, say B, C, D, F, Z? <laughs> yeah, so, um, I mean, our, our first round, we brought in uh, a Canadian VC, Inovia uh, Capital, who are amazing. Um, and they took a, a chunk of that uh, million dollar seed and then I've had about six or seven angels in there. I think one of your judges later um, is one of my angels and um, yeah, I mean they tend to be just private, you know, individuals who uh, want to put money uh, into a company and I've had a lot of success working with people who started companies and founders uh, themselves and entrepreneurs themselves and just super excited to back and be a part of a company. Um, but I think as you get to your Series A and Series B, you're really looking at, um, you know, VC companies to, and that's how they get leverage, of course, um, on their money they put in. You know, angels will get leverage early uh, in a company uh, to make their return. But, um, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, Ryan, um, really quickly, uh, so did you at all find it, easier or harder to raise as you went on through different rounds? Uh, well, I think, you know, effort per dollar is less, right? You're raising bigger rounds, but I, I don't think there's a difference between raising rounds. In my experience, uh, I didn't have a, there wasn't a big difference. I found it hard the whole time. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I think what you, you read about, and, and of course, it's coming at you fast and furious with all these um, you know, financings and, and people will tell you, oh, we just raised X like it was, you know, like a check was written and handed over. Um, you know, my experience behind the curtain was uh, one of a lot of effort. I mean, we, we treat fundraising like a sales funnel, you know. Um, you know, identifying, I think, who the folks, whatever stage you're at, angels uh, at the beginning certainly, uh, Series A focused VCs, identifying uh, who's interested in your space, who's writing checks in your space, um, where the fund is at, and if they're actively writing new investments, uh, filling the top of your funnel with all those folks, uh, and running it re running the process, you know. Um, so, you know, maybe equals no, keep moving, you know, and getting it down, whittling it down. I think in our, our Series A, we started with 180 likely targets, and I think we got 20 checks in. Um, family offices, uh, you know, four big VCs, but, uh, but family offices, uh, and the last one, even a couple of angels wrote checks. So I wouldn't characterize it as, as easy, and I think uh, the headlines often below the, the effort, at least in my experience. Yeah, it's interesting. A mentor of mine uh, once told me, because um, in my early days I struggled raising um, and didn't realize how much effort had to go into it, because 
I'm so charismatic, I thought it would just get me there. Um, <laughs> but uh, then my one of my early mentors was like, you have to start looking at it as investors are investors, zeros are just zeros. It's the same amount of effort. Right. Um, so it's a pain in the ass no matter what you do. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting that you, you look at it as a sales funnel. I really appreciate that. Um, Christine, can you uh, speak to that at all? How long did it, or? or um, if every round was different. Yeah. Or, yeah. I mean, I um, every round for us was definitely um, a different flavor and sort of tone to it. I think for a million dollar seed round, really leveraging that early customer traction. So uh, we help marketers manage all their global marketing investments and then measure ROI on their, their spend. And uh, we had amazing early customers and really used that and their stories and the value they were receiving and they were just renewing when I was starting the million dollar seed round and we'd sold a million dollars in software and that was really the core reason and story we would work with um, investors. Once you get to your A round, it's a bit more about metrics and a bit more about the proof that you've started to scale. Uh, and then the Series B was really about the numbers and the metrics to have a foundation to grow. So your conversation at that point is more about your numbers and the SaaS metrics. Um, still about relationships, still about finding alignment from a growth philosophy and a market, and they like the market. Um, but, you know, I said I did a tour in the Valley for a B round. I really only talked to five investors uh, and we brought two to the table at the end and just pushed that through like crazy fast. And there's drama at every round. There's the moment of truth that I call it at every round where it's like, you know, the final negotiation was like, are we all going to do this? And uh, you sign on the dotted line and um, they all have that. Uh, they all have hard work and, and, and you know, bringing people all aligned to the same, whether it's terms and who's on side and who's all doing it together. Um, yeah, so there's some patterns some, and some differences for sure. So switching subjects a little bit, but uh, bridging onto that exactly, um, because I do know Philip, I am gonna pick on you this time. Okay. So, um, you know, in conversations, uh, even over lunch the other day, we had a very honest conversation and I appreciate that when we meet up together. And so I'm going to look to you to do that right now. Not saying Christine and Orion wouldn't be honest, but I know I can pick on <laughs> Philip and, and make sure that he is. But, um, you know, looking back, uh, if you could look back over the years, I think you said Brent Mula is five years old now, if I remember yep. right. Um, you know, looking back, do you look back and go, dang, that was a, that was a bit of a mistake we made there, or I wish I could have done that round a bit differently or something in that round, or I wish... I talked to that investor, had done something different with that investor differently. Is there anything that you kind of look back and, and feel like you kind of wish you did differently or could have changed? Mm, well, there's definitely lots we've learned along the way. Uh, just kind of give context that we have over 500 investors in our company, okay? So we have uh, people from that have raised, those, sorry, that have invested 5,000 all the way to like half a million or more, right? So uh, there's pros and cons to that. One of the pros is as we go through, like, I guess, rounds, we, our investor base grows, right? So we can go back to them and they will reinvest, right? The downside there, I mean, not downside, but the expectations keep growing, right? I mean, if you're not delivering, they're not gonna be as open to investing, so then you gotta go to new investors potentially. Uh, would I do anything differently? Um, I mean, we haven't done the VC round, uh, so it might be interesting trying that route from the beginning. We went down a route where uh, it eventually became pretty hard for us to change that course or that path. Um, so if I were to do it again, maybe I would try the VC path just to see how it compares. Uh, Ryan, I'm gonna throw the same question to you. Yeah, well. yeah. yeah, please be honest, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're all watching you, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, with, with Foodie, you know, I, I came into it, uh, it had already been around for about 18 months. Um, my co-founder John Cartwright had uh, had founded it out of out of Invoke Media, and uh, there was already an existing cap table, uh, existing stakeholders, um, you know, and probably half a dozen investors, mostly angels. Uh, he'd done the gone through the BDC accelerator, gotten the accelerator note, uh, who some people may know. Well, it was Grow Lab, and and uh, it's it's since evolved, but. 
So there, were, there was an existing kind of um, structure to it. And uh, I didn't really know anything about cap tables. I didn't really know anything about uh, how VC fund, uh, fundraising worked. And uh, so Foodie for me has been a learning experience. You know, in my former, former life, I was in, in finance kind of at the other end of the spectrum. Um, so I really didn't know how these things sort of were put together. So I wouldn't say so much that I would do things differently because, you know, frankly, this has been a real learning experience for me on the, on the, on the fundraising side. Um, but maybe I could frame it like how I would do it next time. Um, you know, and I think for, for entrepreneurs in the room, you know, one advice that I would, I would give or I would take now would be to wait to fundraise. Uh, don't fundraise too early because as soon as you fundraise, you know, a clock starts ticking in the mind of investors and, and you just touched on it, which is that uh, you need to hit another milestone. You know, I, I think of it and I've talked about it like when you raise a round, a door opens way in the distance, but it immediately starts to close. And so you just have to start running, running, running at this door, trying to get through that milestone. And, um, you know, you mentioned that uh, <coughs> angels and Series A and Series B have different uh, metrics that they're looking at. But whatever it is, you know, you're, you're, you're running towards it. So I think if you can get early traction, you know, if you can suck it up, you know, not take a salary, burn your nest egg, whatever it is, for as long as you possibly can. Uh, God forbid you get to actually uh, profitability. Um, but then you're going to be really in the driver's seat when it comes to fundraising in general. Um, I don't think that that precludes you from having conversations with investors. In fact, one of the pieces of advice I wanted to bring today was to say, have those conversations early with angels, with VCs, not with the intention of taking a check from them. Uh, not only does it take the pressure off, I think, when you're having these conversations, uh, also you get to navigate or steer your boat towards uh, the in, in the right direction. Uh, um, and it's kind of free advice. You know, VCs and angels in general will take a meeting with you. Their job is to find the next big thing. Uh, and so even if you're not fundraising, you can bounce ideas off them. But, you know, my message is, is wait. And build relationships. It's so important. Um, and so it's funny you should say that. I, I was ju you just said something. And um, I have an investor friend out of the U.S. that... Uh, one time we were talking and exactly what you just said, he goes, I really hate it, but I love it when startups have leverage. <laughs> and that leverage is traction, sales, yeah. and team, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, Christine, I actually left you on purpose. Uh,